All right, uh, this is Henry's Roadmap to Success. Henry, you're quivering a little bit. I think it's just because you probably you're a little bit, uh, a little bit cold. It's a little bit chilly here. Well, for a Chihuahua, uh, a Chihuahua min pin mix. Yeah. He looks like a Russian toy. All right, so um, basically I'm gonna summarize what we went over. Um, now, first of all, uh, the shivering, uh, if you if he is shivering out of his fear, I think he's just a little bit anxious. He's seeing these treats, he really wants the treats. But it's important to understand that anything your dog is doing when you pet is what you're amplifying. And this is probably the most common mistake people make with dogs is they have a fearful dog and they pick it up and picking it up is a reward. But anything your dog is doing when you pet is what you're rewarding. So if you pet a dog for, for that's fearful, you'll make it more fearful. Excited, more excited, aggressive, more excited, uh, more uh, whatever. I, I, you know what I was just saying. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, pet a dog who's barking, he's going to bark more. And so um, it's important to understand that. Now, if a dog is nervous and I want to lay my hand on him, I can lay my hand on the dog's back, maybe not me in Henry's case, but the guardians. And they do associate that touch with affection. But as soon as I start petting, I'll make it worse. Now, anything a dog is doing in your presence that you don't disagree with is the same thing as giving your seal of approval. So in a very real way, not saying no is the same thing as saying yes. Now, the only time that there's a caveat to that is if Henry is barking at me for attention or whining, which I've heard he likes to do. So if he's whining at me for attention, sit, um, and I give him attention, even if I say, bad dog, Henry, stop doing it, you shouldn't yell at your dog. But good attention and bad attention for dogs are pretty much the same thing. So if he whines and I tell him to shut up, it worked, and that will promote more whining. Now, the guardian's just, he went over to a friend's house, they were watching a movie, he wanted to get beyond the gate and kept on whining, he'd give up and whine and give up. It works occasionally, that's why he does it. So you have to, what we call, extinguish the behavior. You can whine all day long, I'm not gonna roll my eyes, I'm not gonna make an exasperation, I'm not gonna stay quiet, nothing happens. Some of the other things we were gonna go over, like passive training and petting with purpose, will motivate him to do the things we want him to do, and I'll talk about those in a minute. So, um, all right, uh, and remember, breaking a rule is a very poor way to reward a dog. So if you wanna reward him, pet his belly, uh, play fetch, uh, you know, uh, play tug of war, uh, you know, talk to him nicely, there's a lot of ways you can reward him. Breaking a rule should not be one of them. Um, now, uh, speaking of, uh, first thing we talked about was exercise. Um, so, uh, since he likes to play fetch, um, I recommend the guardians get a dog, uh, an, an eye fetch. It's a, they have a, two, a small one and a big one. Get the small one because he's obviously a little guy. And what, you, what it is, is it's an uh, automatic ball throwing machine. I think it's about 60, 80 bucks, somewhere around there. It's a little white, it looks nice. Put it in the corner. And then basically what I do is when he brings the ball back to me, I, if the hole's right here, I hold the treat over the hole. So if he drops it and it goes into the hole, then I pop the treat in his mouth and I would say, I fetch or workout or jazzercise or whatever the word is that you want to use for that. And remember, using fun command words is very beneficial, especially for fearful dogs like this. So all your new command words, I'd like you to come up with a word that is funny, that's gonna make people laugh. One of the little uh, tricks my dog has, down, is what I call, sneaky. Mm -hmm. So I can say sneaky, my dog crawls on the floor across the room. Well, at first I called it worm, but worm's not very funny. If I say sneaky, he drops down and crawls across the floor. I have one of my clients who calls it ninja and the dog does it. So if you come up with these fun command words and people laugh and smile, it makes the dog more motivated to want to do it. So come up with a funny name for the eye fetch. And after a while, he can play fetch with himself. So he comes up and brings the ball to you. And you say machine and he goes over and plays. Uh, machine's not very funny, but you know what I'm saying. Um, okay, so um, exercise is really important. It's important to remember that on a walk, dogs burn more energy from sniffing than they do from the walking. Running is different. They burn more energy from walking, but not for, uh, from running, but not from walking. So instead of thinking about walking around the block, give yourself a duration. If I have 10 minutes, I'm gonna walk down the road this way, on this side of the sidewalk for five minutes, and then at five minute mark, I cross the uh, sidewalk and I come across, and I, so I have fresh sniffs, and we come back. So you might only go three houses. You don't really care. All we're looking for is the sniffs. It's stimulating, it burns energy. Down. Um, that's passive training. Probably could have done that with a uh, treat, but I, or a pet, but I have treats. Um, it's stimulating or it's relaxing, um, and it is soothing for them. And so, uh, and it, uh, like I said, it, uh, the burning of the energy is the key thing. So um, other things we could do, he chased the laser very healthfully. Um, some dogs, they should not like chase the laser. It's frustrating for them, it wasn't for him. So that'd be a nice way to burn his energy. The doggy stairmaster. Remember the first time you do it, though, with and well, first time you do it with an empty stomach so you can max them out, but don't exercise them with a full stomach. Walking is okay, but lateral movement, like the dog bark, definitely no. 
So the doggy Stairmaster, that's something you probably only have to do it maybe two minutes or so at a time, but that you can do multiple times a day. The Omega Paw Treat Ball, you can get on Amazon or Chewy, I would get the, the medium sized ball, feed him one of his meals out of that. You can also get him a snuffle mat and I would feed him his other meal out of the snuffle mat. The snuffle mat you can actually throw in the washer because it'll get a little funky after a little while. Um, remember after, and I would probably, before we go to those things, I would get him eating his food regularly. So put the food in his bowl, he's not allowed to eat it. You eat something in five or more bites or your real meal. Then afterwards you go over and call him to eat it and when he takes his first bite of food for four months, you come up with your command word sushi or whatever you want to say, now you've created a command word for him to want to go there. Um, so uh, if he has to work for his food, that boosts his self-esteem, it also drains his energy, especially if he's using his nose to find it up the snuffle mat and, and the uh, omega paw treat ball he's using his, his, his muscles. Um, you can also do scent games. Scent games would be something as simple as like, I take a treat and hide it right here. And he's got to use his nose to go around and find it. And so maybe, and each time he licks it up, maybe you call it like search or hunt or find or whatever it is. And then it becomes a game for him. You say, he's in the other room. You say, find, you come bring it, put the treats in and say, find. And he has to use his nose to find them. That burns energy and it's stimulating and it's relaxing for him. It also boosts his confidence. Okay, now you put your chin down when my camera's over there and I want to get that picture. Yeah, I see how you are. All right, so uh, next thing we talked about was uh, were rules. He has cortisol in his blood, which is a stress hormone. And I think it's a result of him thinking that he has the same or more rank and authority than his humans. Part of that is because when he tells them what to do, pet me, they do. And we'll talk about that with petting with a purpose in a sec. But um, if we don't, for dogs, burning energy is like a form of currency. If the dog doesn't see you get up and enforce a rule, it's hard for them to see you as a leader. Um, dogs go through life probing to see where the boundary limit is. They're expecting you to say no. If I'm driving down North Venice here, and I'm driving like a maniac, like it's Grand Theft Auto, and I blow by police officers, and they, never, they say slow down, but never give me a ticket or stop me, I'm gonna think I'm above the law. I don't think he's above the law, but I think he's per, his perception of where his rank authority is, is is a little bit confused. So if he thinks he's in charge of the humans, and he tells the humans not to do something, they do it anyways, then that stresses him out, just the same way that a parent gets stressed out, they tell their kid not to jump off the steps, and they jump off the steps and they're worried they're gonna break their legs. So eventually the parent chastises and yells at the kid. It's not that they're mad at the kid, they're worried. And so we often put our dogs in a position where they think that they're in charge of us because of how we interact with them because we don't have any rules. And then when we don't listen to them, that stresses them out. And that stress, uh, all aggression comes from stress. Frustration also can lead to stress. So, uh, yep, and that's like cortisol. That quick twitchy movement uh, is, is a manifestation of cortisol. So it'll take a little while for him to get this out of his blood, but eventually you'll start seeing that he should be more relaxed and less jumpy and less twitchy for sounds and things like that. And... Disneyland. There you go. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, okay, so um, coming up with uh, uh, some creative ways of exercising him uh, are, uh, are, is gonna be really helpful. Exercise for him should be every two to four hours and when he's quote unquote naughty or he gets really whiny, that should be an indication that you need to get him a little exercise. Go to the stairs, do the doggy Stairmaster for a couple minutes. Uh, load up the Omega Paw Treat Ball and, and let him do that a little bit. Use a laser. You'll find the more that you manage his, uh, his anxiety or naughtiness with, through getting more exercise, the better he's gonna be. Also, before you go over to somebody's house, before you go to the dog park, before you go for a walk, exercising him before those things could really set him up for success. Um, and just make sure I missed it that time. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Disneyland. <laughs> and uh, so just make sure when you get in that exercise, he has at least 10 minutes to recover so he stops panting before you do the next thing. Um, okay, so um, we, next thing we talked about are rules. Um, for dogs, a lack of rules confuses them into thinking that they are peers, and if they th see as a peer, then listening to is optional. So uh, some of the rules that I suggested, one of them is not allowing him on the couch. Now, uh, for dogs, the higher they sit, the more rank or social status they have. So sitting here says we're equals. Sitting up here on the back of the couch says I have more authority than you. And he's a little dog. I'm sure he probably gets up there. So basically, by taking away the furniture for at least 90 days to form that new behavior pattern, that can help him see that I'm down here and the humans are up here. Now, I'm sitting where the dog bed used to be, and you've seen the camera pan there a couple times already. We moved it there because for dogs, one of the worst punishments is to be excluded from the group. And so if the guardians are on the couch right there, this close together, and I'm seven feet away, that looks as a negative to me. So I recommended moving the dog bed over there, and he's doing really well. And I showed the guardians how to, uh, how, how to treat him to go there. The word we're using is Disneyland. So the way we did that, we threw 10 treats, one at a time. Every time he lifted up, we said the word Disneyland. The second way was we leave a treat on the dog bed 
And when he goes in there, we said, uh, and found it on his own without us telling him, we said Disneyland. Third way, we put him, lead him in there, put him in a sit or L-A-Y, and put the treat in his mouth and say Disneyland. These are three ways to entice him to go there. Now, you've seen me throw treats a couple times. Now when he goes there, I throw a treat. So now I come here and it rains treats. Well, and I hear Disneyland each time I go here. So over and over again, after a while, you'll just say Disneyland, he'll go over there, then you would give him the treat for compliance. Um, let me see. Uh, get the X mats for the bed, uh, for, the, uh, for the couch. You probably have to get about four of them. After about a month or two, you can take one of them away and reposition the other three. And that way, if I want to sit on the couch, I come and I fold the X mat, I put it underneath the couch, I sit down, I'm going to go get a drink of water, I grab it, I unfold it and put it, and make sure you do that. Because you'll go get a drink of water and he'll just jump right up there. Remember, every time he uh, backslides, you're going to lose a lot of progress. Not to zero, but you lose quite a bit. Um, uh, let me see. Um, uh, well, let's talk about the bell. Um, uh, the guardians have taught him to go outside by ringing the bell. Um, but the bell's hanging from the door. This is a mistake. Most people intend to ring the bell to mean to go outside and potty, not to go outside. But if you hang it from the doorknob, the only time the, dog, the bell rings is when the door opens or if the dog nudges it. So the bell ringing really means the door opening. Remember, dogs need repetition, consistency, and good timing. So I hear the door open consistently, and I hear the bell. So right here, he's going to find the treat that's behind this bag, and I'm going to say hunter. And we're going to let him find it on his own. We're not going to say it for him. He's got to discover it on his own. Now he's got the treat. There you go. Hunt. So I put in context what that was. Same thing with the bell. So what we want to do instead is take the bell. I would cut the bells down so you have a couple of them you can put in your pocket. Go outside with him. As soon as he starts to pee, you gently ring the bell about like this. Mimic the sound that he'll make when he nudges it. Then when he gets done, you pop a treat in his mouth and gently ring the bell while he's chewing it. So I give him a full treat for that. Now if he's little pieces, so he chews a little bit longer, so you have a little bit more bell uh, association. Sit. See how he backed away? That's an illustration where I talked about the video above. He's not fully comfortable with you petting me. And also you can have attached feet. There was also a noise on the, on the roof up, uh, on the next apartment up. So when I reach the petting, if that noise happens, he might associate that noise as associated with this. And this is a comedy of errors that happens frequently. Get him back to the bell. So every time you, for about two weeks, you take him outside. As soon as he starts, and don't tell him to potty. I would probably, and I'd probably also assign a command word first. Um, but you can use the bell sound or the command word in Pedley. I would probably do the sound first. So every time he goes out some potties, as soon as he starts to pee or poop, I say the word business. When he gets done, I pop a treat in his mouth and say business a second time. I associate the action with the command word business because I'm saying it while he's doing it or ringing the bell. And then eventually when he gets done, I reward him for doing the job I wanted. And then I label or tell him why he's getting paid. Sit. Just like that. Um, after doing that for about two weeks, then you can actually attach the bell again. And I would probably remove the bell for maybe a week or so. And then after that, yeah, I know. Then I would attach the bell to the wall through a push pin. And then I would have another set of bells that maybe you keep in the car. So if you go to a friend's house, you can go to anybody's house and ask them if you can do the push pin in the wall or put it underneath a cabinet or whatever. Um, and then uh, that way he can uh, go to any house he's at and ring the bell. And he's motivated to do it because if he pees outside, he gets a treat. If he pees inside, he doesn't get that treat. Um, okay, so other rules we talked about, um, not being allowed within seven feet of whoever's eating. That's a way of challenging for their food. Um, and you can use those escalating consequences to move them away. Not being allowed in the kitchen or preparing the food, the guardian's pretty much already doing that. And then I also make the dog sit before I open a door. I go to the door, I tell the dog to sit once. And I'll get that for you. And the dog sits within that three second window. If your dog is trying to scratch and you scratch for him, that can be a nice little, yeah, he's liking that. Oh, he likes the ear, yes. Um, so basically, um, if I tell the dog uh, to sit and he doesn't sit, then I walk away and I sit down. He has to sit within three seconds. I'm only gonna say it once. The more you say it, the less you mean it. Remember to use vocabulary if you're saying too many words. I talk about in the video above. Henry, give me a spin. 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 Okay, so uh, say just the command word. So basically, um, is this still rolling? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so basically, um, when we're doing, uh, when you're going to the door, you say sit. If he doesn't sit within three seconds, you walk away, sit down somewhere nearby, wait one minute. And if you tell your uh, Google at home, please, she'll do something funny for you. Uh, or thank you. Uh, and then after one minute, go back and t command the dog to sit again. If he doesn't sit this time, walk away for two minutes while you're sitting down. Next time, sit down for four minutes and sit down for eight minutes. Keep doubling the length of time until eventually when you say sit, or the dog sits, or what will happen is the dog will sit at the door. Now, you also have a, a bell, and so what you'll do, he'll ring the bell, you go over the door once you have this established, and then you'll tell, and then you'll tell him to sit, and when he sits, then you open the door. 
Um, and I would do the same thing here. Go to the door and, uh, and tell him to sit. If he sits, start reaching for, to release him from the kennel. If he gets up, pull your arm back. Don't, and then you say no, and I say sit again. And, I, and if he sits, then I reach again. If he doesn't sit, I would walk away and wait a minute. And then come back to him, tell him to sit. If he sits, I reach again. If he gets up, stop, sit. If he sits, I start again. If he doesn't, I walk away. And sometimes I say sit, he'll sit, I reach again, he gets up, I pull back, say sit. I'll say sit maybe two or three times, three different opportunities. After that, I'll pull my arm back and say sit, and pull my arm back, he doesn't, and he sits. And I reach again, he gets up, and I pull my arm back, and I just wait for the sit. So now he kind of knows what I want from him, and he should start offering that. Just like uh, what the guardian does for a living, we're going to start raising the criteria, raising the bar, you're asking for more each time as the dog gets more established. Um, let me see, the guardian should also eat something before they feed him. Um, if he doesn't eat, then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to pick up the bowl. As soon as he walks away, we pick up the bowl, we dump it empty, and put the empty bowl back down. And I make sure he's eating consistently like that before we start doing the snuffle mat or the Megan Paw treat ball. And remember to put the bowl down. Don't pick up the whole bowl. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think if there was something else I wanted to talk about with the uh, feeding. I lost my train of thought, Henry. Hendry? Um, in, on the East Coast. Um, so basically, um, just the human eats five bites. Um, and, oh, uh, if he doesn't eat breakfast, I would not feed him dinner. That would make him more hungry for breakfast the next day. And just uh, like humans, it's probably better for him to have a bigger meal for breakfast and a smaller meal for dinner. Okay, um, so those are some examples of rules, but look for other rules that can incorporate uh, to help him see and you enforcing the rules and see him developing some self-control. If I can't come on the carpet when you're eating, I want to come on the carpet, I try here and here. Remember, if he's trying multiple times, he's, being, he's doing due diligence. He's not being uh, defiant. And so basically, you have to always outlast the dog. Once, after a while, he'll try pro, 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 and after a while, he'll go sit down somewhere. Okay, see, he learned that you were equal to the task. Um, all right, uh, we also talked about petting with purpose and passive training. I'm going to shift a little bit. So for petting with a purpose is if he comes up to me and he nudges me or he jumps on my lap, which is part of why I went, went over with no furniture, but if he jumps up on me or nudges me or barks for attention, he's telling me what to do. Leaders tell, followers ask. So if he tells me what to do and I do it, then I'm validating, yes, you're in charge of me. So next time, let's say he nudged me, I would say, Henry, sit. Sit. If he does what I want him to do within three seconds, I reach over and pet him and try to pet him under his chin, try to avoid reaching over the head. I usually say you can pet a dog anywhere you want, but he doesn't like being petted over there yet. He'll, the video above will help with that. Uh, but right now, if, uh, or for right now, right, not right now, but for dogs, a proud, confident dog has his nose in the air. Uh, insecure dogs have their nose down, so if you reach over the head, that creates a down nose orientation. So uh, all things being equal, try to pet him under the chin, but you can pet him anywhere else that he's comfortable with, except for over the head. So if I tell him to sit and he sits, I pet him and he gets a reward. If I tell him to sit, let's say he's sitting here, I can tell him to sit here or lay down. Don't practice paw anymore, high fives. Um, if I tell him to sit and he does not sit within three seconds, playing hard to get works great for dating, it works great for dogs. So if you can't do what I ask you to do, the smallest thing I'm at, that you can do as a dog, then I can't be bothered to pet you. Not getting those pets will make the pets more valuable. After a while, he'll start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for some attention. When he does, make sure you do pet him, reach out his chin and pet him at least once. Otherwise, he'll go back to nudging you. Now, remember to use the watchword of paycheck. I'm gonna go through all the watchwords right now. Paycheck means I suspect you are petting without a purpose. So if somebody comes in and I'm seeing him, I'm petting Henry, he's standing, they say paycheck. Even if I did it right, I stop petting. I say, Henry, sit. He sits, I pet him on his chin, say sit, and I say, actually, I asked him to sit. When you flush the toilet, he stood up and I continued to pet him, but thank you, because I do forget to pet without a purpose. And even if I want to pet Henry, I still tell him to sit. And if he doesn't sit, he doesn't get that attention. If you get in a habit of petting with purpose, every time you pet your dog, it increases its respect for you as an authority figure. It boosts his confidence because he's earning that rather than just getting it for good looking. And then number three, it helps him practice a basic behavior, which will help in other situations. Uh, it truly becomes a gift that you won't even realize that you're doing once you get in a habit. It'll take you about two and a half months to do that. We also talked about passive training. Passive training is waiting for the dog to organically offer the behavior. I did a little bit of it here earlier on, ca off, on camera. So every time the dog comes to you, pet him and say, come. Every time he sits, pet him and say, sit. Every time he lays down, pet him and say, crash. Name all your individual toys. The guardians, I think, have already done that. Right there, he just lay down. I use the word celebrate. So if one of the guardians is there and I saw him lay down and the other guardian didn't see it, I would say celebrate. They would reach over and start petting within that three second window and just say whatever he's done. Not good, celebrate, just, or not just good, down just down. Um, come up with a fun word to eat, like sushi or meatball or lasagna or whatever it is. So every time for four months that he takes a bite of food, we say lasagna. After a while, I say lasagna. That means I get to go eat. 
Same thing with pottying, uh, all the rest of the commands. He goes in here, you know, you can call it Kendall right now if you want to change it to Palace or Hilton. So every time he goes in, there's Hilton. And then he finds a treat in the same way that we did the dog bed. After a while, you say Hilton, he goes in there and your friends laugh. That kind of, if you have a dog with cortisol in their blood, the more that everybody else lightens the mood, the more beneficial it is for him. If you're having a fight with your significant other and you're fighting at a restaurant, I don't know why I'm eating with you. I don't like you right very much right now. One of your friends sits down, it's the life of the party, starts cracking jokes, and you're almost peeing your pants. They get up and walk away 10 minutes later, and you're like, I don't remember why we were fighting. Same principle acts for dogs because they can read facial expressions. So come up with those fun command words. Um, let me see what else. Uh, I think that's about it. We want to be escalating consequences. Um, I'm not going to go over those on camera. If you forget what those are, let me know. I can share those with you privately. That's a lot of people do those out of context, so I don't like to share it. That's awesome celebration right there. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Anything else you want me to go over? Um, I think that's pretty good. Can you show us real quick those uh, steps that you were taking? Like that's the escalated were... consequence. Yeah. That, that I don't like doing on, oh, okay. on camera because some of these people use those out of context. If you that's forget okay. what those are, let me know, and I can send you a video, a private video, where uh, you can you can watch because uh, uh, the other partner wasn't here. Right. Uh, and uh, that way you can see what those are. But try to describe them if you can't, let me know. Okay. I'm happy to go through that. Um, one thing you could do that kind of goes through those is if you go to doggoneproblems.com, <laughs> sit. Uh, and uh, remember also watch his ears. Ears up and the, uh, in front, that means I'm comfortable, I'm liking it. Going back means I'm uncomfortable, just like that. So if somebody reaches for him and they move back, I remember to practice that in the video that we went over above, stopping when they do that. Mm -hmm. So if you go to doggoneproblems.com, the section that yeah, this video and all the rest of my videos is called Dog Training Tips. It's in the red toolbar or in the menu. So click on that and there's a search bar, type in invisible, just invisible. I go over how to enforce an invisible boundary using those steps that I, you just talked about. And I guess I'm telling people how they can find it right there. You gotta watch this 20 minute video, figure that out. But I'll watch those and practice those. Remember to set up scenarios where you can help him practice the behavior you want, like having a, a friendly dog come over and do that over and over again until you get to the point where uh, he's comfortable with doing it in the, in the controlled situation. Then you're ready for the next change, challenge. Last thing I wanna talk about is the dog park. Most of us, uh, a letter dog gets too worked up because we, we confuse excited for happy when it comes to dogs. So when he's in the dog park, again, first of all, exercise him before you go to the dog park. Apples are good for you, buddy. Uh, so when you go to the dog park, make sure you're exercising first and you're gonna notice a big difference there. But when he's at the dog park, if he starts getting too worked up, go over and I like to put my hands here on either one of his hips, the inside of his hips, and pull him away from that area and keep increasing the distance. Anytime he's reactive, the best thing you can do is increase distance. So pull him away and walk away and give him a timeout. Wait for his energy level to come back to, you know, like a two. Uh, I like to say zero is asleep, 10 is as crazy as you've seen your dog. If you prevent it from going over level five consistently, after a while the dog will self start self-policing. That's the development of self-control and he's gonna make less mistakes and be less reactive when he's not overstimulated. Remember, excited is not the same thing for happy. We think it is because they, their mouth is open when they're out of breath, but that usually means they're out of breath or they're stressed. That's not the same thing as happy. And he can be excited and happy. I'm not saying that that's not the case, but he's gonna be more prone to make mistakes when he's overstimulated. So helping him practice, not getting too worked up, playing with you guys, uh, playing with your neighbors, uh, you know, whatever it is, and getting that time out that's again a form of operant conditioning. I get too excited and the fun stops. I calm down and the fun continues. Um, I jump up on the people, they freeze. I sit down in front of them, they pet me. We're teaching him the things that we want him to do. Most of us remember good attention, bad attention, same thing. So the dog comes to us, we ignore it. It sits in front of us, we ignore it, lays down, ignores it. If it starts barking, we correct it. Chewing on things, we correct it. Well, if my goal is to get your attention, that's when I'm gonna do the wrong stuff. Petting with a purpose and pasture training are great ways to do it. I guess I talked about during the watch words I, uh, earlier, I didn't go through them. Paycheck means you're petting without a purpose or I suspect you are. It's not a gotcha, it's a gentle reminder. Celebrate means you're missing an opportunity to reward the dog for a desired behavior. So you just turn and just say whatever the dog's doing. He's standing there, assuming he came and put him and say come. Uh, or sit or whatever it is. Uh, vocabulary means you're using too many words. Henry, give me a spin. Vocabulary, spin. Is there damage in celebrating too late after the three seconds? Um, it's actually 45 seconds, but it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, and they all go straight down. And they also, the, the, especially with where you guys live, if a siren goes off at five seconds, 
he might think it's associate. So I just tell people the first three seconds is what you really want to shoot for. Now there is a difference between one second and th three seconds. One second is much, much more impactful. So Got it. aim for that as quickly as you can. Okay. Um, now, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, please let me know. I don't think we'll need a follow-up session for the stuff that you're going over, but if we do, we do. I just do those one hour follow-up. This is expensive session because it's three hours. Uh, but if we need to do that, let me know. But it, please text me or call me. If I don't hear from you, I assume everything's going great. I have thousands of videos on all sorts of different stuff that I can share with you. And that's my first option because I have more business than I can actually keep up with. So I'd rather just send you some videos and have you so happy that you're referring me to your friends. Uh, you know, even more business I can't keep up with. But uh, you know, a lot of dog trainers just want to get 10 sessions out of you. I want to just get you the best behavior that you want. So your dog is a walking advertisement for me and what we do and the power of positive dog training. Henry, your buddy. Come. How about if we give a little bit better camera presence? Let's get you over there. Everybody needs to see how handsome we are. Sit, spin, jump. That's Henry. That was a good jump. That was a very good jump. <laughs> this is Henry, and this is Henry's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.